Mike Bravo, turning On September 10th, 2022, I flew into Steinbach for the Manitoba fly-in. Crossing overhead the field, one minute. That was foul. the nicest one I think I've been with you yet, Bill. <laughs> the Steinbach North Airport hosted this year's event, and it was a great one. There were stall competitions, flybys, flower bombing, and airplane rides for anybody who wanted one. So Dean and I jumped in Raven and made the trip to CJB3 to join the fun. So here's a little footage I shot that day. Enjoy! So this was my first time to the Manitoba fly-in, but the organizers did a nice job of making it easy to arrive. Their website included things like schedule of events, notices to pilots, grounds map, arrival and departures maps, and great instructions on how to get in and out. So Dean and I headed out to the hangar, got Raven ready. All right, it is the 10th of September. Dean and I are on our way to Steinbach for the Manitoba fly-in. We are uh, just holding short here. We're just going to make some radio calls and tell the good people at Sulacout Radio what we're up to. Sulacout Radio, Dryden, this is RV6 Golf Hotel, Mike Bravo. Last call was a long Golf time. Hotel, Mike Bravo, Sulacout Radio. Yeah, good morning. Hotel Mike Bravo is uh, currently holding short here on Bravo uh, with the AWOS. Uh, we're just looking for the traffic. We're going to be uh, departing uh, 3-0 for a VFR flight to Steinbeck. Hotel Mike Bravo, roger. Our check runway 30, drive an on the hour wind 1806, altimeter 3006, and squawk 0720. 0720 for the squawk. Again, you can check we're positioning for 30. We'll call airport. Roger, thanks. And Hotel Mike Bravo, you said uh, Steinbeck, right? I'm just curious, uh, Steinbeck the main or Steinbeck South? Uh, Steinbeck North, uh, uh, CJB3. Great, check JB3, thanks. It's the uh, Manitoba fly in there today, so there may be some other traffic going that way. Oh, nice. Pancakes and the whole works? I hope so, I'm hungry. All right, on. I'm hoping for burgers. Yeah, I think a burger would be fine. Yeah. Yeah, the pancakes were good at uh, Lake Crest. That was a good deal. All right, we just creep ahead, get that rudder locked. There we go, tailwheel's back good. in. Oh. Golf X-ray, Oscar X-ray, Silk Ready. We're going right. uh, Silk Ready. One Check this complete, off. away we go. A little bit of a crosswind from the left side, but hardly enough to worry about. That tail up, there we go. Airspeed starting to wake up. Get a little bit of light, and there we are, we're airborne. Yeah, so we call Radio Dryden, the Hotel Mike Bravo is airborne off of 3 0. We'll call clear to the west. Hotel Mike Bravo, Roger. Yeah, she's a beauty day. Yeah, it is nice. Got your headset sorted? So far, so good. So far, so good. There's 2,000 feet already. She's pretty smooth today, eh? So far, so good. Uh, I don't anticipate we're going to have anything bumpy and rough. Maybe later. Yeah, maybe later when she gets a little warmer, but I doubt it. Here we are winging our way over to Kenora, just south of town. Captain Bill. So I talked nice to the boss and took a day off of work to go to this event. It meant a lot of extra driving for me, but it was worth it. Dean and I made our way out to Manitoba, which wasn't real hard. The route from Dryden to Steinbeck pretty much follows the Trans-Canada Highway. I just follow him. Better start slowing down now. I'll keep my eyes peeled out this way here and see if anybody else is trying to peek in. It's real handy to fly with another pilot to keep an eye out for traffic. Especially today, there was lots of inbound traffic to Steinbeck. Yeah, right. in sight. I got the traffic in sight. I'm just gonna slow down so we don't overtake him too quickly. Yeah, it looks like you're catching up to him. Pacific South traffic, Julian Kenya is lining up 36, we'll be departing to Steinbeck. No hard time, we'll be there in two minutes. We'll get her down to 100, throw some flop down, that'll slow her down a bit. Steinbeck North, Alpha Road Papa is uh, final for the uh, infield, uh, beside 3-3 on the grass. And just to make it interesting, they were using parallel runways that day. 
Back north traffic with Delmine Bravo is over Blue Lunar, joint left, uh, or sorry, right, downwind for 3 3 with the traffic. Nine back north, Romeo Alpha Victor joining the Turand approach from the west. Hard to see that little bugger, isn't he? Yeah, I just I lost him now. Straight up the nose, he's, yeah, you're not going to be able to see him now, he's in a bunch of trees. Okay. But we are in the pattern now, so I'm going to drop her down to. Stand there we go. That was a piece. my echo, final. Please take Speed down. Notch and a half of flaps on. Slide back north traffic. Julie Doster X ray is a mile to the southwest. Uh, I'll be crossing midfield to join right down downwind 3 3. Across the midfield. Slide back north. Julie Hotel Bravo's uh, mid right downwind uh, runway 3 3. Back north, Hotel Mike Bravo's early downwind to 3 3, right side. Uh, Julie Oscar X ray has both those aircraft. I'll follow the uh, last call. Okay, good show. Back, back north, Hotel Mike Bravo turning. Uh, right base for 3 3 with the traffic. Right back north, Julie Hotel Bravo, short final 3 3. And there's always the added traffic from Steinbeck South on the same frequency. Aircraft on short final, are you wanting to display or just park? Surprise me. <laughs> and as Where's my nephew is fond of pointing out, the push to talk button is push to talk, not push to think. Okay, speed's good. Back north, Julie Dosk, actually. Set, trip set, uh, Kirby, speed. cold mixture's rich. We've got two of them right there. We're all strapped in. Another guy on uh, downwind. Hotel Mike Bravo is turning final 3 3 with the traffic. So, did you want me on the play? Bravo, please. Better get off the runway, so. Yeah. And Hotel Mike Bravo is short final 3 3, so full stop. Traffic, Yankee Fox, Juliet, crossing overhead the field, one minute. Aircraft on short final, just keep rolling to Bravo and turn left. So, call for my echo, downwind. Please take for P1 Katie. Oh, and I didn't even bounce. Oh, oh, oh. Side back north, from will Alpha Victor, overhead, Mitchell, in. In that was down. the nicest one I think I've been with you yet, Bill. <laughs> uh, you're a jinx, I think. Sunway right North, Delta Bravo, Pop, uh, final, 3-3 three, three, three draft, in a while. number two. You did good. When you planted it on the main, so it kind of freaked me out. It felt like that nose over feeling when you yeah. you land a little front heavy on the floats. Yep. Yeah, oh yeah, it kind of freaked me out. Look at the old steerman. Oh, there's some neat stuff here. Yeah. Hey, back north traffic, hotel Mike Bravo down and clear the active. Back north, Yankee Fox, Juliet, overhead the field, joining right down with 3 3. Oh, nothing like the smell of Manitoba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where you going? Romeo Alpha Victor, 2 to the west, crossing midfield, joining right 3 3. Well, there's a lot of people here, so I'm going to just walk my airplane. Yeah, lay down it's with 3 3. Easy to push around. So. I would have taxied it. I suppose I could have taxied all the way to the pumps, but there was a lot of people walking around, and the last thing I wanted to do was bump into one of them. After we arrived and found a place to park, I took a lap and had a look at all the planes that were here at the field. Here's Curtis Penner's Bearhawk Patrol. Curtis has been all over Manitoba with his airplane. There was more than a few 150s kicking around, even a tail dragger version. A 172 and an old Luscombe with a rag wing. A Cessna 177RG Cardinal. An RV 14A, and another Vans. This one's an RV 9A, a 1956 fastback straight tail 172, a Piper PA 28 Cherokee, cute little Cessna 150. This one's for sale. A great looking mall on Amphibs. One of my favorites, another Vans RV 6. 
I had a great time chatting with the owner of this little Euro Coupe. Another great looking van, this one an RV7A. There was this home built Super Cub monster tire cool looking stall airplane that was there. Cute little Sonics. And of course Harv's Air was there with a couple of their airplanes, including their recently rebuilt Cetabria. Very nice 1967 Mooney. Really nice Wag Arrow Sportsman 2 plus 2. And the Diamond Aces Steinbach Radio Controlled Airplane Club was there with a pretty good turnout, including a couple model RVs. And you had to remember walking around that you were still on an active airport. There was aircraft taxiing through. Another real nice van, this one an RV6A. A Piper PA38 Tomahawk. Then I had an opportunity to talk to the builder of this wonderful Bearhawk. Another Bearhawk. Another Bearhawk, yeah. Did you build it? I did. Yeah? How long did it take it? Well, four years part time. Four years part time? Yeah. Yeah. What have you got for a motor? It's a Lycoming 160. Okay, O320? Okay, 320. yeah. Where are you from? Dryden. Oh, Dryden, okay. Yeah, yeah. floats running from Dryden. Has uh, floats in its future? Not this one, no. no. I had a cub on floats for 35 years plus, so I sold it now, so okay. I have this. <laughs> yeah. Fellow Dryden's got one, and he's got uh, like an old uh, four the patrol seven. Or the or uh, <coughs> the four seater then? It's a four seater, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a big, it's a monster, yeah. Four seven, four seven, yeah. But uh, nice yeah, airplane. This is just a tandem, like yeah. a super cub type thing. Yeah, he built it from scratch, so a beautiful job. Okay. Beautiful job. Took him 10 years? Yeah, it took him about 10 years. Yeah. But well, uh, it was worth the that. wait, boy. It was a nice airplane. Yeah. yeah. But but the fuselage he built from scratch. Okay. So, so yeah, it's a it's a fabric fuse and a metal wing. Yeah, yeah. And that was uh, Barrow. The Barrow's the guy who engineered it. He liked the full full metal wing for the sake of uh, you know don't have the scalp. That's the, it. The the fabric the, does. And, yeah. yeah. And, and, then can, and then he can only have the one strut. Yep, single strut. Well. We were even treated to it, a kind of a unique flyby with an extra 300 and a steerman. One of the coolest planes there was this North American Harvard that Mike Taves brought to the fun fly. One lucky fellow got to go up with him for a rip around the patch. So this isn't like going for a ride in a Super Cub or a Cessna 150. There's rather an elaborate safety briefing that goes along with flying in one of these machines. They're fairly complex. The first bit is just to figure out how to get into the rear cockpit and get yourself strapped in. That's followed by a quick familiarization with the rear cockpit. Even as just a passenger, you have some responsibilities when it comes to flying in the back seat of one of these things. Mike did a great uh, pre-flight for this fella. Uh, showing them the uh, the nuances of this particular airplane. Here, here, here's your push to, push to communicate. You see how it sticks there? Yeah. Just got to make sure it flips down. Just make those snug. Okay, so make sure you can operate that. So you probably have to go across with your right hand because you, your left hand won't come back. Yeah, Just keep back. it pulled toward, towards oh, you. There, yep. Yeah. 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 Make sure you can open it. If you can pull it towards you. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So you can, so until we're ready for takeoff, you can put it wherever you like. All right? So with the briefing complete, Mike climbs into the front cockpit and gets ready to start up this cold engine. This is a Pratt & Whitney R1340 9-cylinder radial engine. They can be a little fussy when they're cold. Once she was going, Mike let her warm up for a few minutes. It takes a little while to get all the temps and pressures in the green with these things. After that, it was ready to go flying. After they were up, Mike made a few passes on the field including this dirty pass, called the dirty pass because the gear and the flaps are all down. Yeah, 
then it was back to the field. Mike come in and grease this landing. Did a great job. They say if you could land to Harvard, you could land anything. Nice landing, Mike. In unknown airport. That's still cool. Then it was back to the apron to get parked. Time for the next event, flower bombing. There were quite a few airplanes participating in the flower bombing, and it was kind of cool to watch, but it was really difficult to try and record. Those uh, little bags of flour are real tough to see when they're coming down. Um, there's a couple of spots here. If I zoom in real close, you can almost see the bag. Um, really difficult to record this kind of stuff, but uh, it, was, uh, it was fun to watch. But the next part was really cool to watch. That was the STOL competition. So STOL stands for short takeoff and land. The competition idea is to use as little runway as possible. The distance of the takeoff and the distance of the landing are added together and the shortest one wins. There are pre-measured chalk lines made laid out on the grass there where they were used for the runway. And the deal is you have to touch down on or behind the very first line and from there to where you come to a complete stop, that counts as your landing distance. If you touch down before that white line, just like that, you just missed and the landing doesn't qualify. Mike missed that chalk line only by a matter of a few inches. Here's that really nice Bearhawk patrol we were chatting with the owner. I believe Luke Penner was flying on this day. Then it was Curtis Penner's turn to come in with his bear hawk. Curtis has got lots of practice landing on short grass strips. He's been all over Manitoba. Gets as hard on the brakes as he dares. That's how it's done. Curtis took home the gold for that beautiful landing right there. He was the winner of the day. So my first visit to the Manitoba fly-in was great, but it was time to head back home. We're going to have a bit of a crosswind, but nothing too terrible. We got a Citabria on the numbers ready to roll. We got a 172 ahead of us. Citabria's on the roll. And airborne. Not back area traffic, I'll think it's Italy. 120 west of Steinbach. We're descending to circuit 1800. We're going to. And Steinbach north traffic. Hotel Mike Brown with uh, RV6 holding short on Alpha for 334 departure. Bill, cameras are on, you must watch your language. <laughs> At least it's an RV, you'll be quick. <laughs> RV in the circuit, do I get time to backtrack or should I wait for you? No, go ahead, backtrack, if we can extend this out a little bit. Or uh, mid downwind. All right, we got you there, I appreciate that. Uh, as soon as the 172 is past me, I'll start to backtrack. Yeah, right to that. There was still quite a bit of traffic flying in and out of Steinbach North at this time, so we had to wait our turn to get out. And we had to try and slot in with the traffic that was coming into land, the traffic that was taken off, and the traffic that was just buzzing the field. Gotta be closed and latched. The latch trip set, fuel pump. Let's go aviate. Back north, the Super Cup golf box is usually just on the west side of Blumenard, uh, 1.6. We're about to back north, we do have the traffic uh, to the westbound uh, site to south of Sandbach north. Yeah, Sandbach north, tell my travelers, we're there more 3-3. We'll be doing a, a right turn and then starting to the east. Back north, traffic. Yeah, the one might not be so official, the current feet are going to be on the next one. One at a time, folks. Okay, I'm looking for Luke. There he is. Traffic, extra pump, Zulu's one mile to the north of Blue North 1600. We'll be joining the straight and right hand downwind 433. Yeah, back north traffic, Hotel Mike Bravo is joining a right downwind to 4334 Lower North. Where's that other RV? On the runway. Oh, it's touch it down. Yep.
Keep an eye on him, make sure he goes clear. Yeah. Alright, back on the side of the top, Mike Bravo is turning a right face 433 for low and over. Contact North Exit Top, Blue is early, right head down, it's 33 for the top. I'm on the door, I just went across, I'm still contact on the road, I'm blind to go behind you, and I got you in sight. Contact. Alright, back on the side of the top, Mike Bravo is turning a final 33 low and over. It was time for one more low buzz job over the runway, and then back home to drive. High speed pass over runway 33 with a little bit of a rocket of the wings to say goodbye to all the good folks there at Steinbeck. And then zoom climb, careful not to bust the 1500 foot exit altitude. Turn on course and head back to drive. And homeward bound we were. The trip home was pretty uneventful. A couple of rain showers we dodged on the way home, but other than that, pretty quiet. All in all, the trip to Manitoba and the Manitoba fly-in was a great experience. I plan to come back next year. Thanks for watching.